Hey everyone, Zach here, and I've got a cool project that I've been working on for a while to show off today. What you see before you is a really awesome demo of interoperability between C Sharp and C++, where I use C Sharp WPF for a clean user experience, and then C++ with Vulkan to provide a 3D rendering implementation that you can render into the C Sharp window with. I built this this tool, the predecessor of this tool in WinForms to just kind of build a quick and dirty tool that I needed for a game project. And it worked really well and I iterated on that tool tons to add new features and every time I needed something I would just throw it into the tool. And after a while it got to the point where the tool is kind of bloated um, it's hard to add new things and make it nice. The user interface design was just kind of thrown together because I didn't expect to need more features. And I really just wanted a clean slate just to, to kind of start over, take the core features that I needed and bring them over. But at the same time, I really wanted to challenge myself to build the tool nicer and to play around with the technology that I thought would be really valuable for my career goals and my career development later down the line. So I saw a picture in a Bungie tech blog of a tool that they made that really kind of turned me on to this idea of using um, some sort of C++ rendering in a C Sharp window. They wrote a tech blog from one of their tools engineers that was a, a really great piece on what it's like to be a tools engineer. And they had some really cool pictures of some of their tools at the bottom of the blog. One of them was obviously a world editor of some sort. It just had this really beautiful tool ribbon at the top of it and a 3D window and your typical uh, 3D editor objects items on the right hand side, you know, for editing XYZ and rotation of objects and object uh, properties and things like that. And it really got me thinking. How could I do something like that? How could how could me, Zach, actually create a tool that kind of does the same thing, looks nice, and works, and is useful, and not just a pile of garbage? And what you see before you is the fruits of that, that thought process, that experiment, that challenge. This was a monumental challenge. Maybe not monumental. It took me a while working evenings and odd hours. But it was a really fun challenge. And I have kind of a lot to show for it. So what I have is a s simple world editor. This maze represents the world in the game that I'm working on. Maybe not this exact maze. Maybe this one. Or maybe this one. But you can see, I'm clicking on this Generate Maze button, which is presented by C Sharp, and this picture on the left is changing. The maze is changing, it's being regenerated each time, and the cool thing is, is that this is being drawn in Vulkan in C++, and the picture's just kind of almost being overlaid on C Sharp. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's being rendered in C Sharp. And I can do some fun things like resize the, the window. You can see the viewport kind of changes as I skew the aspect ratio. So there's um, some things that could be fixed there to make that nicer. But it does work. And if I go on in, I can scroll down and I can fly left and right. And I can go down and I can go up. And I can just kind of fly around this maze. And we can come in and we can see we have our little cardinal compass down here show you which way is which um, and it does some basic lighting right now this really is just kind of half-assed lighting just so that you can see some of the detail otherwise the unlit maze just kind of all blends together and it's hard to to actually see what's going on so this was a really awesome challenge trying to get C++ rendering to work with C Sharp. But in the end, it really wasn't too bad, actually. Um, the, the CLR or the um, common language runtime for C++ works pretty well to interoperate with C Sharp. 
and you can create your own um, window host in the C++ side of the .NET framework that then will just plug right into C Sharp. And the cool thing is I could just write a DLL in C++ using the .NET framework and just load it up in a C Sharp tool and just plug the, the new my new window host right into it and it just kickstarts everything and just goes, it works, it's awesome. So the cool thing is that I can kind of separate the actual controls in the C sharp from the actual gameplay mechanic logic and the rendering in the C++. The C++ really only cares what it's being told and that's a, a simple messaging system, just a simple cue that it has that the C sharp will put commands into to tell it to do things. I'm not sure that's going to be the best way to make this tool work moving forward, but right now it works pretty great. That's how the maze gets generated. The C Sharp tool is just generating a maze and plugging it straight into the command queue of the C++ renderer. And then the renderer just picks it up and renders it. And it's pretty awesome. The biggest challenge I really have kind of faced with this is actually the user input. Getting smooth user input through to the C++ code where it really kind of needs to be. The editor doesn't quite care where you are, and it's a little bit tricky to have the C sharp pass the input into the C++. So I started with the the win proc for the the window, the hwind, um, that ends up getting rendered here, and that worked okay um, because it would get the key events from the Windows subsystem basically had to tell C sharp to pass them through to not accept them so that they would move through to the child process or the child window. And that worked okay, but it was really choppy and blocky, not great for a smooth fluid, you know, this nice user experience where I can just kind of float over it. It would be more like, you know, skipping around. And if you zoomed in close enough, you would actually like skip whole tiles of the maze and I was trying to set it up so that it would do kind of a key state. So whereas if you hold the W key down each frame, it would, you know, move smoothly like this. But the problem with that key event was that the key events would come in at random times and they would keep coming in. So if you were to move and then let go, but that let that key up event comes in while you're moving forward already, you could get into a state where the, the system would think that you still have that key down. It would override or write over the key event. And then you get some weird things like where you would just end up moving infinitely and it wouldn't catch the key up event. So I ended up moving to a pretty simple, actually, method of just pulling the keys each frame from C++. And what we have is is this nice, smooth, fluid movement. We multiply it by the time delta of the frame so that it is smooth and fluid, but then we just keep track of key down and key up, and we toggle it whenever we pull the keys. So this was a really fun project. Anything that combines tools development and graphics always just really piques my interest. Those are things that I just really love to work on. They're really fun, they're challenging, and it's so rewarding when you get it right. And I'm really happy with how this tool is, has come along, actually. It's missing probably 90% of the features that it needs to be functional. But now that I have this baseline, it should be pretty easy to implement. Moving forward, I intend to implement some basic features like being able to pop down into the maze and actually click on individual walls or floors or objects, whatever, and being able to move them around like you would in a normal editor. Um, the, the maze itself needs some more work for generating. Uh, this is currently a perfect maze where there's one path through the maze. And for the game, I need it to not be perfect. So there's some massaging of the maze that I need to do. I need to be able to add things like loot spawns, the player spawn, um, all kinds of things. But it's a really good jumping off point because I can really simply add controls over here on the right in WPF. And then I can move them around easily. I can make it a little more modular with with the Q for commands. Um, there's a lot I can do to make this really powerful and really flexible. 
And if I wanted to, I could do some things to like implement better lighting rather than this this one light that lights the whole maze. Uh, it would be really interesting to do a basic deferred rendering. Um, some sort of viewport culling is also necessary for bigger mazes. Once you get up into, uh, you know, a couple hundred squares wide, this really starts to bog down just because it's so much geometry. So being able to, to kind of cull things out would be helpful also. So it's not quite where it needs to be, but this is a really, really awesome tech demo of how you can fuse a, a rendering API like Vulkan. Um, it should be trivial to implement something like Direct3D as well. OpenGL should be easy also. This is a really cool demo of how powerful it can be to use that, that interoperability between C Sharp and C++ thanks to the .NET framework. So I'm really happy with how this turned out and the doors that it's opening to be able to um, do the things that I need to make my game project work a little better, come a little faster, to make the development a little more fluid. I always love working on tools. Tools are super awesome to, to work on, especially when somebody starts to use it and it just makes their process go so much faster and so much more efficient. That's super rewarding. And in this case, I'm the end user, so it'll be super rewarding for me when this tool makes my game process work faster and more efficient and more flexible. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Once this tool is in a better state where it actually does the things that I need, I should hopefully be able to show a demo of the actual game that I'm working on. So keep an eye out for that. should be coming up pretty soon. I'm hoping to get to the point where I can actually release a demo within the next couple months. But uh, we'll see how that goes, work permitting, and life and all. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.